So this is some underwater video from uh, a spot that I have in about I don't know, 105 feet, something like that. So as the camera's going down, you can see a lot of mangrove snapper. Um, there's some yellow tails here. You can tell by the tail there, and there's the mangroves uh, that tend to be a little picky at times on days that they're there and they're eating. It's it's pretty awesome. Um, you know, there's some blue runners. There's some more mangrove snapper and whatnot. It's a pretty big ledge. On a depth finder, if you drive around it, it almost looks like uh, kind of like a sinkhole because you go in different directions and you get a ledge, you know, maybe about 100 feet one way, then 100 feet another way. Uh, so as the camera's going down, you can start to see some of this dark shadowing here. Um, it doesn't look all too spectacular on the camera. I think it actually looks bit better on a depth finder. It looks more like a roll off, but as the camera's going down, you can you know definitely tell there's a lot of snapper on this spot. Uh, there's some yellow tails on the bottom. Uh, there's a little bit of bait. There's a lot of blue runners. And when I've gotten yellow tails here before, it's almost like I'm hog fishing where I'm dropping um, you know hog balls right to the bottom, and the yellow tails eat it right on the bottom, um, just half shrimp, which is kind of interesting to me. Um, they don't tend to, to chum up all too well. Uh, there's um, some scam grouper, but you can see it's nothing too spectacular on here. Uh, just a, a bunch of, you know, rocky looking bottom. But we've caught in carbos. I think there's some goliaths on the spot because there's some fish that we haven't been able to stop. So I might have just missed the, the, the good spot while I was dropping the camera down. Uh, so the day that we came back out here, it was real stormy. Uh, I'm going to bring... So this was the predicted um, forecast for what we were going out into. So storms moving from west to east. So I can, as you can see, 10 a.m., which is typically when you're you know going to be offshore early in the morning if you leave at 7 and you got two-hour ride out, that's when you'll be out there. So you can see just storms pretty much everywhere. I leave from you know Tampa Bay, usually running west, southwest, pipeline up north a little bit. So pretty much everywhere was covered. So we didn't have real high hopes going out. There was also some red tide in the area, so we didn't spend a whole lot of time catching bait uh, just because we didn't want it to die. So we went out with a lot of dead bait and whatnot. And this was the first spot we stopped at in the day. And as we started fishing it, lightning's popping all around us. We're like, all right, well, let's get out of here. So we ran north quite a bit to get away from the lightning, about 10 miles, um, to another decent-sized ledge where caught in some mangoes and, and and whatnot before so this is the uh the first spot we actually ended up really fishing so i'm using the 16th ounce jig head um description that is right there and you can see i'm threading my shrimp on the jig head um, this is with a 2x hook so it's a classic style um, but with a stronger hook that i make just because you know you're getting a lot of gags and and big mangoes and whatnot and as you can see if you can make that out, there's a lot of rain. He's got a satellite radar up all around the area. This is after we ran from storms. It's a breeze. You know, you know there's a lot of white caps. You can see rain kind of off in the distance, whatnot. But honestly, days like this, the fishing is insane. And so I'm going to basically watch along. I'll stop the video throughout and just kind of explain what's happening. So I was dropping light jig head down. And I'm thinking, oh, nice. Nice big mangrove snapper. We had dead shrimp, we had dead sardines, all that stuff this day. Thunder! Let's go to the boxcars. There's your big mangy. So, a nice big mango. I think we're in about 120 feet at this point. Fat one. And this was one of the last days of red snapper season, too. So, decent red snapper mixing in. Yes! Uh, yeah. Oh, I need a mutton. And so after the mango, next drop, get a yellowtail. You can see these fish are spitting up a lot of junk, um, which tells me that they're in feed mode. Uh, so we started chumming pretty heavy, and that's when we were getting, you know, these yellowtails and mangoes up in the water column, which allows me to use that 16th ounce jig head. I use a 4,000 size reel on an 8-foot eight, eight rod, um, just 20, 30-pound braid, 20-pound leader. 
I think the lighter the jig head you can use, the better. I got, I got my snapper slam going on over By here. By this point, my five drops, I got a lane, oh, a yeah, yellowtail, a, a red too. snapper, a mangrove <laughs> snapper, and a vermilion snapper. So five different fish on five different drops. And here I'm just showing the bait. So just a bag of dead shrimp. There's dead thread fins as well. And so I'll rip the head off, throw the head out, which I think is almost like chum. Just kind of thread that hook on. Gives it a nice natural presentation. Yeah, up at the front of the boat, like, oh, Jay hooked up on something up big. Did you hook it up off the bottom a little bit? Did you hook it up off the bottom a little bit? I think you got a little ways to go. Nice. It's a 21 inch red snapper. That's big. You lose that, I'm gonna put it. <laughs> it's hook balls. Be a mang. Got a net? No, sweet. I think you're playing it more than it's really worth. Hey, just get my drag super loose, doesn't matter, Justin. It's all about the, it's all about the fun. It is, it is a mang. Holy it's crap. A man's mang. <laughs> uh, no net, huh? That's a big one. Johnny. Oh, <laughs> oh so he's using a eight ounce hog ball. He likes to use circle hooks, and so I make those with circle hooks. Um, and he does really well, sticks a lot of fish with them. Twenty pound leader, and this is a giant mango. He didn't have a net, so lifting it in the boat was a, a little sketchy. Oh my god! <laughs> Woo! Daddy's having a beer. All right, I'll tell you. Hold on, I need so a I picture. Got a couple pictures of that fish. So giant mango. You can see a hog ball. Right in the corner, 4,000 reel for him as well. Same eight foot rod. Um, fat mango though, especially for, for that depth. That's a, that's a, that's a solid one. That thing. Dude, look at that. That's a beast. Order green chartreuse tends to work. Really you switch well your hands. Yeah. yeah, I'm the same way, but. Thank you. It might, maybe it's what we kept, it could it be a shark or something? Just fine. Did you see it and it's something stupid? So as I was rig rigging other rods, mine went off, he grabbed it for me. Um, Justin was in the back. He was fighting something that got eaten. Uh, we maybe had Goliath kind of take over the spot even though it's just a ledge. It's got, well, it's got a bonita or so they're tuna getting a, They're getting action. a little annoying. Fresh bait right here, boy. Fresh bait right here. So if you watch my rod tip here, you'll see the... the that usually tells me, you know, Benita, Benita or Tuna, but the fact it wasn't, you know, completely wearing me out signified to me it was Benita. Here. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm about to cut him up right now. Oh, yeah. Like, sir. Mm. And so, Benita, you were really used to annoy me because they'd take so long to catch, but now... Um, these past few years, I keep every single one I catch, um, make awesome bait, especially rigging with like a one ounce, one and a half ounce hog ball. You can send just a strip down. You cut it in like a two inch by four inch piece. Um, just take a little fillet out of there. Awesome bait. And I'll show you at the end of the video what we end up using these for. Um, if you chunk them up even smaller, good for yellowtails and mangoes too. Add to my pile. And that one ate a jig head on the light drop, too. Mm, little 20 pound leader, little 16 ounce jig head. It's all about that 2X hook, baby. I don't know. Everyone I've hooked has seemed to have been doing the same thing. We'll see. Although it's coming up a little easier. Oh no, nice mangy. Nice mangy. My bad. That was a, uh, oh look at that fall right out. Oh. Um, so I went to a, the, the glass were getting real bad, so I was like, well, let me use a little heavier rod. Um, so I went to a half ounce hog ball. Let me find this picture real quick. And so when I'm using the, the half ounce hog ball, I hook a nice mango, I'm, I'm cranking it up, and Goliath ended up grabbing it. And I, I was able to horse it out of there. So you want to know if these hooks are strong? I literally horsed the lips 
out of the mouth of the Goliath of what was a mangrove snapper. So I got everything back. Um, I'd never seen that happen before. It was pretty crazy. Look at those teeth from the, the mango, what it was. Uh, it was another big mango, but this was, you know, sitting right on the bottom with that half-ounce hog bowl. Glass getting annoying. That season will be nice. If only you could take the bigger ones, too. I didn't get that on video, though, so I just had to I got it. That was way up, So wasn't it? this was after we went back to that first spot. Um, the storms sat pretty much to our west all day. We originally wanted to run about 70 to 80 miles, try to get some big gags, big red snapper, but we stayed shallower in that 30 to 35 mile range. Um, so we went back to that first spot, and I had caught some big yellowtails before putting the camera on, and we started chumming pretty good. And so Jay went real light and sees them up in the water column and uh, ended up doing crazy Crazy good on big yellow tails. Man. Oh, yeah, I, I, I can see your fish. So if you see in the water, we got that chum starting to go pretty good, all that, that shining and flickering. It's still overcast, and that's when I think some of the best snapper bites are when you get that overcast. They'll get higher up in the water column. Is that a giant yellow tail again? Yep. It's a mango, dude. It's a mangy. It. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Holy crap. Hey. We're gonna be over our <laughs> whatever at this point. <laughs> oh, oh. Maybe it's just your rod. <laughs> hey, he's on the hey, hey. Oh, I'm getting hit too. And we were we were so close to so close to changing plans too. Oh, be a yeller. Nice. Look at that thing. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah, that. Damn, man. yeah, I'm gonna picture it. Leave him out for a moment. Oh my god. Yeller, yeller, tail, baby. <laughs> yeller tail, baby. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, dude. Look at how fat this thing is from and so what I'll explain here in a minute. I switched jig heads, the current started getting stronger. Um, so I went to a, what's called a shad jig head, so it's got a thinner profile. And that helps it get you know, sh more straight up and down in the water column. So when that current picked up, that shad was able to get you know down to the, the, the yellowtail depths that I like. And uh, Justin's day was kind of, he just went to a little heavier, the, the, the typical classic jig head. Um, but we're all using all the ones with 2x hooks here, which on those giant mangoes you kind of need. Eating so much. You guys both hold that. Oh, and I started using squid too. So if you're yellowtail fishing, always have squid. I think that's probably the go-to bait. Uh, look at that double header. Dude, yours is stupid. Yeah, a giant right there. Ooh! Swing! Well, is it a mango or a yellowtail? It's like my favorite fish in the world. You got my bait, that's why. Uh-oh. Might have me. Maybe. I think you're clear. No, yeah, you're clear because I got a fish. Almost had a triple A. Oh, yellow. Oh, yeah. yellow suit. No way. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 That's a big one too. That's a giant. Jeez. It's a J at this point. <laughs> Where are we right now? Also went to that Chad style because I was catching, you know, a lot of the big yellow tails that he wanted. So he went to that Chad style and a, a quarter ounce and he ended up getting some of the big yellow tails that you can see there too. Um, I think let's see do I have Oh here's one. That's one of the bigger ones. That's what that standard you get. Uh crazy, crazy big yellow tails for uh, for how deep we were. What is occurring? It's a, it's a rainy day bike, man. Never fails. Oh, stupid blue runner. It's a mang. Are you serious? It's big. Oh! It broke right when I lifted the bed. Like it feels. So that fish was big enough to break the leader, the 20 pound leader, when he was lifting it in. So there's uh, his mango, and then a couple of the the other big yellow tails we were getting. 
Um, a rainy day, cloudy bite. Awesome for the big snapper. Uh, I heard it. Not that big? Yeah, are you big. giant? Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Not that big. So there. Two X shad jig had three at down. So I was using the right candy. Jay was using that chartreuse. Um, mm. I mentioned that thinner profile helps to get a little more straight up and down when the current's stronger. Typically, I like it to go down slower, so I'll use the the wider profile. But when the fishing's this good, it's almost good to just get down to them as fast as you can. Catch so many blue runners, I don't know what to believe anymore. Oh, 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 oh! That looks correct. Oh. That looks correct. Oh, yeah. Need to mark this part of the ledge. You're a good one. You're invited to the party. All on squid. Here's another little tip real quick. Let me see. You want your bait to be almost as close to the point or way down in the bend as possible. I've seen some people, like, when they're using squid, they'll slide it all the way up. That's not what you want because you're not going to hook as many fish. You want it down low. So I try to double and triple the bait to keep it, you know, bunched up right down at the bend of the hook. So when that fish bites down, it's got a much better chance of, of biting the point of the hook. What are you working with? It's coming up pretty easy. Yeah, it's Giants. Yeah, some try. Some try grab them. We're back. Close. It's not quite as instant as it was. Scamp. Best eating fish right there. Love scan. I'm gonna drop a white bait. So that's gonna be close. Oh yeah, we're there, baby. <laughs> the smoker. Smoker. So we moved again. Look at how shiny it is. Um, by that point, we had our yellowtail mango limit, which. It was pretty awesome. In about an hour and a half, we knocked it out. Um, so started flatline. We were looking for some, you know, tuna, and we went out a little deeper for red snapper grouper. At that point, the, the, the clouds kind of lightened up. Um, ended up getting this real big kingfish on the flatline. Twenty-five pounder, maybe. Oh, that it's pretty long. Huh? Big king. Pretty decent. Get if it's legal. So Jay started using a uh, bigger hog ball. I did too. And we ended up getting into a bunch of grouper um, with the bonita strip. So if you see when it comes back to the boat, to the back of the boat, you'll see the bonita getting cut up. I think it's legal. Yeah, that's legal. <laughs> Jesus. How late's your leader? 20. <laughs> oh my God. I'm swimming out now. The heck? What was that, a bonita? Mystery fish. It looked like a bonita. And so, let's go back to this a little bit. See, here's the uh, 1.2 ounce, 2.5, 1.25 ounce hog ball with a strip of bonita. Um, pretty much every gag I've caught this year has been on that same setup. A little bigger spinning rod now, 8,000, um, 60 pound braid. And I love this braid. It's something I'm gonna be offering soon. Um, it changes colors every 32 feet. And so you know exactly where the bottom is. I'll make a video explaining in the future the multicolor line there. There's a Bonita getting all cut up. Oh, God dang. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> what the hell? I was a little mad about that one. 
that fish hit me up off the bottom. So this multicolor line, you can kind of tell. So in the red was about 130 feet, and then the next color I think is purple. And so when I was getting to the purple, that's when I knew where the bottom was. So I'm trying to stop that fish before it gets down there. And I mean, it it just grabbed it and and, and ran. Um, but here's a few quick pictures of what I did get up. So the gag, so you can see the bonita. This was one of the first fish I got there on that hog ball. Nice red grouper too, with just a just a chunk of bonita. Hooked him right in the point of the nose. Um, and when you're using spin rods like that, it's a lot of fun. I think I had 60 60 pound leader there, so it gave me a little little resistance, little chance. But that gag I got up pretty good with a big spinner. And then when Jay was copying me, he got a nice gag too. He only had 20 pound leader. He was fishing crazy on a 4,000. But he was able to get up a nice gag with it as well. Yeah. Pulled the hook. How far? How far up was I? See, I just barely was getting into the purple there. Then I was down the bottom. Now I'm back in the red. So when I know I'm getting close to that purple, that's when I start putting a little more heat on the fish. Hey, we're about to get we're about to get that grouper aggregate. Oh, quickly engage and get it up. If you lose this fish, you're sweet. Sure. Please no. I would still be very uh confused. What do we got? Come oh, on. red snapper! Yeah, nice one. Nice red like... snapper. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, I just nutted my oh, I thought you just lost. It. Oh, Bill! Holy cow! Dude, I think the fish before it was an even oh. big, it was an even bigger red snapper. Yeah. That's a big one. All right, get a, get a picture of one red snapper yeah. at least. That's a big one. That was a good one to uh, end the day on there. Nice big red snapper. So, big thing, just trying to get across is, um, you know, even when you get those low pressure days and it might be a little breezy, some of that fishing is is awesome. Um, bring some light jig heads have a whole lot of you know different profiles colors because on a given day everything everything will work differently and uh i hope you guys enjoyed try this new format out peace